There are plenty of video game introductions still spoken about to this day because of the huge impact they had on players. Bioshock's Bathosphere Ride and The Last of Us's escape sequence definitely spring to mind as semi-recent examples. But one I see spoken about much less is the opening to Prey, even though in my view it is without doubt one of the best introductions to a game you'll ever likely play. Over the course of this video, I want to take a closer look at how the way it's designed and the way it tells its story combine to make Prey's first 10 minutes or so some of the most memorable in all of gaming. And on that note, let's get cracking. Prey kicks things off by asking players to pick between playing as a male or female Morgan Yu, and for this video, we've chosen to play as male Morgan. It's not anything particularly exciting, although there is an interesting effect with Morgan's eye flashing red due to neuromod usage, but I do just want to quickly highlight the fact that the position of the toilet seat in Morgan's apartment changes depending on which players choose. It's not of any consequence to events which follow, but it does clearly demonstrate just how much attention was paid to even the little details in Prey's opening, something that only becomes more apparent the longer it goes on. Morgan wakes up in his apartment to the sound of his alarm clock greeting him and reading out the date. Good morning, Morgan. Today is Monday, March 15th, 2032. A quick call from Morgan's brother Alex sets the scene, and players are then left to explore Morgan's apartment, the hallway outside, and the roof as they see fit. There's an obvious benefit to including a safe area like this at the beginning of a game, as it allows players to get used to basic movement and interaction controls without any threat present. Continuing to explore the apartment, there are one or two things which don't quite add up. In the kitchen, there's a cookbook left on the counter featuring a handy tip for avoiding overcooking salmon. Nothing out of the ordinary, you might think, until you realise it's a cookbook which was published in 2033, an entire year after when this scene supposedly takes place. Near Morgan's bed, there are scuff marks on the floor as if something has been repeatedly moved over the surface, and the same can also be found at the end of the hallway outside the apartment. Again, this is unusual, but the scuff marks on the floor and the cookbook could easily be missed by players. I must confess that the first time I played Prey, I didn't spot either. In the hallway, however, there's something else strange players can witness that I guess a good amount of them did cotton onto, and that's the dialogue options with Patricia Varma. For starters, it's a difficult one to miss as players are forced to walk past Patricia in order to progress through the intro, a smart choice on the part of developer Arcane Studios. Many gamers are a creature of habit, and I'd wager a good amount of players not only stopped to engage in dialogue with Patricia, but also exhausted the options to interact with her. I know I did the first time I met her, and if they did do that, they heard this. Heard there's a chopper on the roof. Must be for you. You'll have to take the elevator. Down the hall. But you know that, I guess. Aren't you going to be late? You're supposed to keep going. You're going to get me in trouble. I can't talk to you anymore. There's a clear change in tone from upbeat to anxious as the dialogue continues, and what she actually says definitely rings alarm bells. She says Morgan is supposed to keep going, hinting at the predetermined nature of events taking place, and also that he will get her into trouble, alluding to the fact her role may not be that of a janitor, and that whatever it actually is, Morgan is making it difficult. The area around the corner from the hallway housing the elevator Morgan must take to reach the helipad also seems rather innocuous, but again hints at something unusual taking place, although this is perhaps the trickiest clue to spot so far. If players leave an object outside the elevator and then ride it up to the roof, it will still be there when they step out. And attentive players can experience even more object-based shenanigans on the roof too. Attempting to throw something off it will cause the item in question to bounce back, and objects left on the roof will still be there at the other end of the helicopter ride. By the time players enter the helicopter then, there's certainly been enough for them to potentially spot that they may be beginning to feel somewhat uneasy, and things don't let up when they reach Alex and his facility. Oddly, it has the same scuff marks on the floor as Morgan's apartment and the hallway outside, and what happens next isn't any less strange. Morgan's put through a series of tests, which are a lovely way of expanding on Prey's movement mechanics, subtly introducing new options to players in a manner which makes sense in-world and don't interrupt the flow of the story. The first room teaches them more about picking up and throwing objects, the second crouching, the third climbing, and the fourth and final tests ensures they've interacted with a computer. Players have already had the chance to do this in order to pick up some extra backstory in Morgan's apartment, but that was optional and it makes sense to include a computer again here, and to make it mandatory for players to interact with it, as making use of computers is a vital part of the game as a whole. Despite completing all of the tests perfectly, the scientists watching don't seem best pleased with Morgan's performance. In fact, they actually seem to suggest that Morgan has failed them, which is strange. I'm sorry, can someone please explain to me what's happening? Simmons? I installed exactly what Tina brought down. Did you double check? Speaker's still on. 
And speaking of strange, one or two players might spot a room that looks suspiciously like Morgan's apartment behind the scientists as well. There's not too much time to question anything though, as a mimic promptly attacks and Morgan is gassed. Players hear a short piece of dialogue between Alex and colleague Marco Simmons, which again hints that everything is not as it seems. Alex. Simmons, what's going on? We have a problem. What about Morgan? He's alive, sedated. Clean it up. I'm on my way. Got it. Before Morgan wakes up in his apartment, again. Returning to Morgan's apartment after what players have just witnessed is a jarring change of pace, and it does a great job of helping invoke a feeling that something sinister is going on in an environment which should be the safest for the player character, their home. While some things haven't changed from player's previous visit, it's somehow still the 15th of March for example, a lot of things definitely have. Certain objects have moved position, and the computer now only features one email from someone known as January, which is repeated six times and reads simply, Danger, leave now. Even the time on the computer has barely changed since players' first period spent in the apartment. Alarm bells will no doubt be ringing for most players by this point, but if they aren't, then the corpse of Patricia in the hallway will most likely do the trick. A dead body is a scary enough thing to find in isolation, but this particular body looks like it suffered a similar fate to that of the researcher attacked earlier on. Next to Patricia's body, players find a wrench, and upon further exploring the hallway will realise there's no escape route. The hallway bizarrely no longer leads to an elevator, and all the doors leading to other apartments are locked. They may also try to open the balcony doors, or will already know they're jammed having tried to open them previously. The wrench, the locked doors, the change of geometry in the hallway, even the bright sunlight highlighting the balcony all push players towards one conclusion. They need to smash the apartment windows to get out onto the balcony in order to progress. As they smash the window with the hope of being rewarded with an escape route, they quickly come to a shocking realisation. They're not really in Morgan's apartment, they're on Talos 1. But not everyone will have done what they're supposed to, and it is worth noting that there is another, less obvious path to take. In the hallway there's an aquarium, and if players smash that first, they'll find another exit. It's not one many will choose, but it's a nice touch that this is included to create a slightly different outcome for those who make a different choice. So, as it turns out, Morgan has been on Talos 1 the entire time, in a simulation of sorts, living Monday morning out over and over again. As to why? Well that will slowly be revealed to players as they progress through the game, but the how quickly becomes clear. The apartment was an elaborate stage. Morgan didn't ride an elevator and travel in a helicopter to change environments. The environments changed around Morgan, and the sweeping vistas which could be seen from the apartment, on the helipads and during the helicopter ride itself, were actually created using looking glass. Glass that can be seen through, but that's also able to display a near photorealistic image at the same time. And so now, everything begins to make a lot more sense. The scuff marks on the floors of various areas were evidence of the environment changing behind the scenes. Patricia was essentially an actor and became anxious when Morgan didn't follow the script, and objects appearing in the wrong place or not behaving as they should suddenly seems a little less out of the ordinary. This slow realisation that all of these things were connected, that they were always pointing players towards a greater truth, is why Prey's twist is so fantastic. A good twist doesn't come from simply being as shocking as possible, or so left field that players would never have any chance of seeing it coming. No, a good twist comes from giving the audience the clues they need to potentially figure out what the twist is, or at least gain some understanding of what may be coming, before it actually occurs, so that when it does happen, everything that came before can be seen in a whole new light. It's that moment where you give yourself a smack on the head, the one where you can see the entire puzzle rather than simply its pieces, and you then begin to wonder how you didn't see the bigger picture to begin with. It's the moment when you realise Prey is treating you like an adult, and that it expects you to be observant from this point on if you want to experience everything it has to offer. And what's so clever beyond the execution of the twist itself, is that through its very inclusion, Prey's opening serves a dual purpose. First, by laying out a trail of breadcrumbs before the big reveal, some or all of which players may have perhaps missed, and by making it obvious they were there the entire time, Prey is telling players that they need to pay attention to their environment. The reveal is a reward for those who really paid attention to the finer details and had their suspicions confirmed, and a warning to those who didn't once the game begins proper. They run the risk of missing out on some of the story, the smaller incidental details that bring Prey's world to life, or even hidden areas if they remain content to simply sleepwalk their way through the experience. 
Prey even throws in another opportunity for players to break the window, so to speak, not long after in Morgan's office. If they remember what they've been taught and they put it to good use after watching the short video which plays, they'll be rewarded with the reveal of another hidden passage. And beyond secret pathways, a lack of attentiveness could even end up putting them in real danger too, thanks to the inclusion of Mimics, Prey's most common enemy and one with the ability to shapeshift into any inanimate object which takes its fancy. In its own special way, the twist wasn't just about trying to shock players, but to prepare them for the rest of the game as well. Its second purpose is that by making players believe they're on Earth and not in fact on Talos 1, before pulling the rug out from underneath them, Prey also exposes them early on to one of its most important themes, distrust and the idea that the people they meet, the environments they explore, and even the objects within those environments may not be what they seem at first glance. Using the twist to give players such an explicit example of this early on means the theme is cemented as an idea in their minds far, far sooner than it otherwise would have been, which then means it begins to colour their perception of Talos 1 and everything they experience from the first moment they step out into the world. Throughout the entire game, it keeps them asking the simple question, can I really trust anything? It's extremely classy game design. And let us not forget that it's a question which Prey's ending does eventually answer, and do note that there will be spoilers for the ending here in 3, 2, 1. The answer to that question is of course no, they can't trust anything. Prey's ending twist is that Talos 1 itself is ultimately an illusion as well. At the beginning of the game, players escape an apartment to enter the wider unseen world of Talos 1, and at the end of the game, they escape Talos 1 to enter the wider unseen world outside of the simulation. There's very mixed opinions on the ending itself, but personally I really like the symmetry here between Prey's beginning and its end. Combine the subtle hints I talked about earlier and the feelings they elicit with the twist itself, as well as the subtle teaching of mechanics, and what you get is not only one of the most engaging openings in video game history, but an introduction unique in its ability to shock and teach players in equal measure. Prey may not have gone on to become a sales juggernaut, nor the title which kickstarted a long-running franchise, but what it did do was show what an incredible impact subverting players' expectations early on in a game can have, and for that, its extraordinary opening should always be remembered. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, do consider subscribing and leaving a comment, I'd love to hear your thoughts, and hopefully I'll see you again soon.